Welcome to another Crafting with Roswell. Today we're going to be making a book wreath. In your kit, you'll receive an 8-inch wire frame. And just to let you know, six of the kits were actually upsized to a 14-inch wire frame. So if you're interested in trying for one of those, I recommend coming in early. You'll have a baggie of flour, about a cup of flour in here, a paperback book, and just under your cover, you'll have some flour extras. You will also need a bowl or a container, extra flour possibly, a hot glue gun, measuring cups, I recommend two, one for water and one for use for your flour, paper towels, scissors, a table covering, water, and other extras would potentially be a hair dryer if you want to speed up the drying time of the initial step. All right. So we are repurposing a book for this project. So the pages will be cut. They will be um, removed from the book to use. I apologize in advance to anyone who's opposed to this. Um, the books chosen are yellowed on the spines, might have a little staining in general, kind of not stellar condition. Um, but they might have otherwise been recycled. So instead, we're upcycling them for the wreath project. So I'm going to go ahead and set these items aside. And we're going to start by making our paper mache paste. So essentially, to cover our wire rack, we are going to be using pieces of the book to wrap around the frame. So I've done this in advance, so these are already dried. And so you get this nice hard surface. It covers evenly over the four or three wires of your wreath. And so it gives you a place to build up with your book page pieces to create a fluffy book wreath. So first up is making our paste. So I have some water in here, and I have some, well, I have some flour in here and some water in here. There we go. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water and start stirring. Don't add all of your water at once. We just want kind of like the consistency of tomato soup. We just want a nice, thin-ish paste water. And so when the water and the flour harden on our page, on our wreath frame, we get that nice base to build off of. Scraping along the bottom, making sure there's no flower clumps hiding. All right, and so now this is kind of like a tomato soup consistency. So now that this paste is ready, you may find yourself mixing multiple batches of this depending on what size wreath came in your kit um, or depending on how much coverage you want of your wreath form. So I'm just going to take some of the pages of my paperback and I'm going to cut them in half. Then what I'm going to do, this is the messy part. So I recommend having a few strips like already cut and that way you're not dealing with flowery hands and pages. But what we're gonna do is I just like to dip the top part in and then I just pull the page up through the mix so it gets coated. And then with my fingers, I just kind of scrape down to remove some of the excess flour water. We just need the page dampened, 
It doesn't have to be soaking wet. If it's too wet, you're gonna find that it's tearing apart in your hands. If it does rip a little bit, not a big deal. They're not gonna be seen. And then we just start wrapping it around our wreath. So just take the page, kind of lift up on my frame, tuck it under and wrap it around like back on itself. I'll go ahead and do another piece to show you. So I'm not gonna be covering this whole wreath form for you today. I didn't wanna make you wait that long and watch me have to do that entire process. So I'm just gonna show you adding a few of the pages on and then the rest of the wreath is dry for me to do a quick wash of my hands and move on to the next step to show you the whole process. This is a time consuming project. You're not gonna finish this in an hour just because of the steps alone of covering over your wreath form. So I'm gonna overlap slightly. Again, tuck that under and it's okay if it ripples a little bit, but I just usually kind of pull it so it stays close to the wreath frame and add it on. So letting these dry completely, we can be working on the next step, but once these are completely dry, we can actually begin the last step, filling in and creating our fluffy wreath. So I just gave my hands a quick wash. It's gonna dry them off. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my wreath. Since those are still wet, I need to start in a dry area. So I'm all set with my paste for how much I'll be showing you. So I'll move that out of the side. And now I have a few ripped out book pages. So while your wreath form is drying, you can start prepping this next step. So we are going to be making squares of paper using our book pages. If you don't want any rough edges, if you want it to be all consistent, I recommend using your scissors to trim off any edges that might be a little ruffled from tearing the pages out of your book. You can also use like an X-Acto knife to cut the pages out of your book if you don't wanna to have to cut them with scissors afterward. Or you can leave the ruffled edges if you want a more rough look to your finished wreath. You could actually tear all of your squares um, if you wanted that appearance. To give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, here is a wreath I made a few years ago. So this is one of the 14 inch wreaths. These are all paper squares that have been bunched and glued on to the wire frame, same process we are using today. And you'll notice these pages are a little yellowed. Over time, with exposure to air and the elements, and this again is an indoor project only with being paper, are gonna to start to get golden colored. So a mixture of the air, the humidity, all of those factors start aging your paper. And so over time, your wreath actually starts to age. So this wreath being larger, I used bigger size squares of paper and it gives it a very fluffy appearance. So when making your wreath, you can kind of experiment with what size square you want to use. And let me show you an example. So if I just cut this page in half, they don't have to be perfect squares. If I cut this page in half, use my finger in the middle to create a bunch, this is the height that I will create up off my wreath if I'm consistent with my squares. And so for a larger wreath, this size would probably work pretty well. For the smaller wreath, it might be too overwhelming. It all depends on personal preference. So you can always just do a folded square test, get it rumpled. This is the end that we're gonna be putting glue on and see if you like the height coming off your wreath. If you feel like that's too big, it will take more time for your project, 
but if it helps you get the look you want, it's worth it. So I'm then taking that original square, the other half of that page, and I'm gonna cut it into four pieces. So by cutting it into four squares, and then doing my little crumple, you can see the difference in height that you're achieving. So for on a miniature wreath, to have a very full wreath, these little squares would do the job. It's just gonna be a little more time consuming having that many more squares that need to be crumpled and placed. But it creates a really cute full look more in line with the example posted on our Facebook page and on our events calendar and our website. The example photo has paper squares that were more this size grouped all through. So what I then like to do is I have my hot glue gun heated up, I bunch up my pages, I add a little hot glue to the bottom, it's a nice little dollop of glue, and then I'm just placing it on my wreath. So I tend to work from the inside of the ring out. It's gonna to be totally your preference. And I hold it until the glue kind of sets. And then I work my way through in lines. So there's my first one. And I come in next to, and you're gonna see that the pages wanna fold into each other. Just hold it in place. And wait for that glue to kind of set up before completely letting go. And so you do have a little wiggle room when you first put it on to kind of get the positioning where you want it to be. And once it's set, go ahead, grab your next square, give it a little push in the middle, just kind of bunch it up, creating a little point at the other end. Add a little glue and place. And I like to let it just kind of twist and wrap so it's kind of happy in its new home. Do another one. So this is where once you decide what size you want your squares to be in terms of the height and the effect of your wreath, you can be working on, oh, don't worry about any glue that kind of moves around, it's going to be hidden. Um, you can be working on cutting out your squares while your form is drying. Instead of using paper mache if you want, you could always wrap your form in a ribbon, glue to that. There are lots of different options for how to decorate this wreath. You don't have to fully cover the whole wreath with the book pages. I personally prefer that look, but you could do a grouping in one section of the wreath, making it look more like a floral bunch. It's really up to you. I'm just a fan over the years of fully covering my wreath frame with my book pages. And you'll just see the pages want to wrap into each other. just creates this fun chaotic effect. Oop. 
going to fold. Um, as another way to fold it, you can always use the eraser of a pencil, bunch it up over that, and that's going to give you a little more surface area to put your hot glue on if you prefer using that instead of your fingertip. And when you're all done with your wreath, if there are any pages sticking out a little higher than you prefer, you can always come through with your scissors and kind of trim them down. I'm going to go ahead and add one last square. To show you, just kind of form it over your pencil. You end up with a little flat edge that you can then add your hot glue to. So I just go from the inner edge all the way to the outer edge. And then keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. If you want to fill the whole wreath with your squares. And that is how I make a book wreath. Now with the extra flowers that were included in your kit, you can always use floral wire and kind of stick them through. That way if you want to pull them out and change them for different times of seasons, you can do that. Or you can just use a little hot glue on them and add them around your wreath. Or you can completely save them, set them aside and use them on something else completely different. If you have any questions, reach out to me in the comments. I'll answer you as soon as I'm able. And I hope you enjoy this book wreath project.